Pizza Flix presents Classic Movie Monday. Today's presentation doesn't have a Mr. Washington, nor does anyone go to town. What it does have is the Crown Duke of Pizza Flicks, aka the one and only Mantan Marlan in the starring role. From 1941, the super rare debut of Dixie National Pictures. Prepare to laugh your head off. I see there's a blizzard in Florida. I'm sure glad I ain't there. I'd rather be in Florida than to be in California. Boy, how can you say that? You ain't no Eskimo. I ain't no fish either. I'd rather freeze to death in Florida than to drown to death in California. They tell me it rained so much out there till Nora's ghost had to come back and show them how to build a off. Now, that's unusual. Snow in Florida? Floods in California. Where's a man going to spend his winter? Well, that's one thing we don't have to worry about this year. Boy, am I hungry. Hungry? Yeah. Well, you just eat two hours ago. My stomach ain't got no memory. Eating, eating. Don't you never think of nothing but eating? Almost never. You know that eating is the fondest thing that I is of. Did you ever hear of Mahatma Gandhi? Mahatma who did? Mahatma Gandhi. Mm -mm. You know, he went over a hundred days without eating once. How come? He was fasting. Fasting? Yeah. Oh, man, that would slow me up. You don't understand it. What Mahatma proved was that the craving for food is in the head. Well, for him, it might be in the head, but for me, it's in the stomach. You still don't get it. No, but I want it. Well, let me give you a demonstration. Don't give me that. Just give me a poke chop. I'm coming to that. Well, hurry up. All right, now, let your middle imaginations loose. Now, here is a table. Over there is a platter of poke chops done up in a golden brown surrounded with applesauce. Here's a big bowl of gravy. Here's a big bowl of candied yams. Here's a dish of black-eyed peas sitting right next to a pan of hot biscuits. And here we have a pot of steaming hot coffee. Don't you smell that coffee? Is that coffee? Sure. Now, I uh, get myself uh, five or six of these poke chops. Three or four of these yams, some of these peas. Then I covered the pork chops over with some apple salt and garnish it with this gravy. And, uh, pass me that sauce over there. Oh, never mind, I'll get it myself. Hmm, it must be the dampness in here. Then as we Latin says, tempest. Fugit. And one hour later finds the table empty. And me full of pork chops, yams, black-eyed peas, gravy, and apple sauce. 
Boy, you, you ain't only impossible, you is improbable and still hungry. Oh, boy, boy. Mm, mm, mm. What do you know about this? Hey, it's connected there. Mm -hmm. You is a Washington. Mm -hmm. Has you any relatives by the name of Utica Washington from Syracuse? Utica? From Syracuse? I just can't remember. Now, let me see. It seems to me like I remember a name or something like that one time. I don't know whether it was Uncle Utica from Syracuse or Uncle Syracuse from Utica. It's got me kind of all mixed up. Now, let me see. Now, once I had a cousin. His name was uh, Rochester from Albany. Ain't seen him in a long time. Kind of lost track of him. Uh, he's from the New York, New Haven, and Hartford branch. Branch? Mm-hmm. What do you mean, branch? Boy, that's the main line. Is it? Sure. So look here. What are you probing into my personal family affairs for? Listen to this. To whom it may concern, the executives of the estate of the late Utica Washington from Syracuse, owner and founder of the Grand Hotel Ethiopia, would like information as to any living relative of said Utica Washington from Syracuse. P.S. The Grand Hotel Ethiopia is waiting in there. Signed, attorney, black, white, brown, gray, and gold gray. Do you suppose by the stretching of the, any imagination that you could be a living relative of the Utica Washington from Syracuse? Well, if I'm a relative, I sure is living. Utica Washington, Syracuse. You connected there. That's close. Uh, do you think it's close enough? Close enough to look into. Well, maybe I will sometime. <clears throat> Just imagine owning your own hotel. Wouldn't that be something? Fifty-two rooms. Fifty-two chamber, man. A dining room, a whole block square. Fifty-two waitresses. A big barber shop with forty-two chairs. Fifty-two manicures. Just imagine. Wouldn't that be something? Fifty-two sums. I understood everything you read, Mr. Goldberg. But being the personal representative of my client here, Mr. Schenectady Washington, I think it best I check and double check said document and explain it to him. You got it there? Now look, you understand that the late Utica Washington has bequeathed, bequeathed, and requested the property known as the Grand Hotel Ethiopia to his only living relative. That's you. But with one proviso. Uh oh. Now get this. You must manage, maintain, and manipulate the said property according to the policy established by the late Utica Washington Esquire. The condition further states that you can't dispose, dismantle, nor distribute said property on account of the cause at your demise. That's your death. Yes, I know. What you said? I said your death. Uh oh. The said property must go unchanged, unaltered, and unaccounted for to your children, your children's children, your children's children's children, and even their children. In other words, you can't sell the joint. Did you uh, assimilate these facts? Check. I think that's a complete summation of the whole document, Mr. Goldberg. Any comments? Buddy, you're speaking just like a liar, believe me. But one thing you're leaving out. Uh-oh. Here it comes. What's that? The property is just a little bit mortgage. Mortgage? Uh-huh. What do we mean? Well, a mortgage is like this. You own the house or a hotel. Then there's a man that has a piece of paper that says you don't own it till you buy the paper off of him. Well, I own it and I don't own it. That's right, till you buy the paper. Well, suppose I don't buy the paper. Then he owns the hotel and I own the paper. No, no, he owns them both. No, no. That's right. Now you understand? <laughs> sure, I understand. I own the hotel and I don't own it. That's simple. That's right. 
Ain't that so, Mr. Goldberg? You'll explain the definition exactly. Well, how much of that mortgage paper say that he owes? $2,500. Uh-oh. But it's not coming due till two weeks. Well, did he leave no bank accounts, uh, liquid assets to liquefy this debt? Uh-uh, no. Then he died. All that we found was $62.14 in his left hand's pocket. Oh. Now we only got to raise a little over $2,400 in the next two weeks. Mm. Mm. That's bad. Uncle Utica, I sure appreciate everything that you've done for me. Give me this hotel free gratis for nothing. Everything is hokey-dokey, except in one thing. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm ungrateful or anything like that. But I sure wish you hadn't forgot that mortgage paper. Front boy! Uh, coming up, sir. Got to go to work now for you, cook. <laughs> Yes, sir. Fill that ink well. Yes, sir. Grand Hotel, Ethiopia, Wallingford, Montgomery, managing director speaking. Of course, Miss Updike. I surely will, Miss Updike. Not at all, Miss Updike. It will be a pleasure, Miss Updike. Right away, Miss Updike. Goodbye, Miss Updike. Goodbye. <laughs> Who is that? That was Miss Updike. So no? Yeah. She wants you to come up in 312 and take that dog for a walk. Yeah, but the time I turn around, that dog takes a notion that he want to take a, a walk or something. I get tired. Why don't you go up there and take care of that pooch sometime? Now, you know good and well that the managing director of a hotel can't undignify herself like that. This is the fourth time that I went up them steps. Them steps is killing me. What are you beefing about? Didn't I move her from the sixth to the fourth, then down to the third to make it easy for you? Didn't I? That's right. Well, go on. Get going. Coming up. I'm Johnny Fiddle the Great. How do you do? And I do mean you. How to do? <laughs> That's one that Jack Benny laid. You know the fellow on Rochester's program. Say, I want to run with Bath. And don't tell me that one about you giving me the room and I've got to take the bath myself. I've heard that before. Yes, sir. Uh, my compliments, sir. Will you register? What? Oh, thank you. I'll use my own. Show this gentleman to 317. Yes, sir. Come on right this way. Oh, wait a minute. What is the matter with you? What? What is that on my head? <laughs> what is that on my head? Come on, now, don't start on. What is that on my head? Come on, let me tell you. What is that on my head? Don't get excited, <laughs> my boy. <laughs> Who put that there? <laughs> Who put it there? <laughs> you put that there. Who put it there? Uh, for you, my friend. Thank you. He's too good. Come on, right this way. Come around here because I'm fixing the thing you You're supposed to be a lawyer, and I gives you a detainer, and I gives you a job to do. Does you do it? No. One word from me, and you does what you please. Uh, but Mr. Blake. Don't, Mr. Blake, me. I told you I wanted to buy that hotel. I told you why I wanted to buy that hotel. I told you I knew you to go Washington all my life. I told you he made lots of money. I told you he didn't put none in the bank. 
I told you he didn't spend none of it. So what did he do with it? It's hid somewhere in that hotel. And that's why I want to buy that hotel. I'm going to buy that hotel if I have to take a building down and slap him in the face with it. I strongly advise you not to resort to violence. We can get a hold of that place if we use diplomacy. If we use who? Diplomacy. I told you I didn't want no third party mixed up in this deal. My dear Brutus, diplomacy is not a person. Diplomacy is a method whereby we use a mental maneuver in order to uh, reach the desired objective. Don't change the subject. I want to know what has you done with this deal. That's just what I'm trying to tell you. You see this? What's that? This is your hotel all wrapped up in paper. What are you talking about? I don't have to talk. This paper speaks for itself. Well, what does it say? This is a mortgage on the Grand Hotel Ethiopia in the amount of $2,500 due and payable in two weeks or else. Or well, else what? Just or else. In other words, if they don't pay by 12 o'clock on the aforementioned date, the Grand Hotel Ethiopia goes under new management and you is it. That, my friend, is what they call diplomacy with a capital D. Why did you say that in the first place? You let me get all waked up with my pores wide open. I'm liable to catch myself for death or dampness. I would have bust you one for luck. <laughs> yes, my love. Don't my love me. Where's my alimony? Honey, I'm a little short. You've been a little short too long. But I told you. You told me. I told you. I told you my alimony was five weeks overdue. I told you I wanted it. I told you my rent was due. I told you my grocery bill was due. I told you my meat bill was due. I told you last week, if I didn't get it this week, that this time next week you would already be in jail one week. Now you get me some money before sundown. I'll be back in a flash for some cash. Now, what are we going to do? Well, in a case like this, everything is ipso facto or status quo. Never mind the double talk. You don't know that woman. She ain't fooling. You heard her. She'll be back with that man with a badge, and you know what that means. Now, listen. Mortgage or no mortgage. Two weeks or no two weeks. We're going to hide out in that hotel and look for that money right now. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, hello, Miss Updike. No, the valet hasn't brought you Ambrosia back as yet. I'll let you know the minute he comes in. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, yes, Mr. Dagger. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I, I, I'll let you know the minute he comes in, Mr. Dagger. How to do? Uh, may I be in a resistance to you? I don't think we've ever met. How long have you worked for this hotel? A uh, lady, I don't work for this hotel. This hotel works for me. Oh, I don't understand. Well, you see, I own this hotel. I thought he owned it. Yeah, that's what he thinks. But he forgets that Uncle Utica is my uncle. Uh, who you might be? Queen is the name. I'm a beautician. You don't say so. You is a beautician? <laughs> How you like America? Oh, just fine. How is everything over in Beauticia? Have they got into the war yet? Well, I wouldn't really know. <laughs> you speak awful good English for a foreigner. Boy, the things you say. <laughs> yes, Miss Updike. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I must be gone. You take my mind off my work. <laughs> good, the things that you said. <laughs> I certainly will. Come on down, senor. Who's that? Come on down, stay. Oh, same to you. I am Senor Jose Don Juan Romero Jefferson Stiletto. I play this week in a theater in this town. I want to get a room. 
I want a room with a great big, big door. Big door? Si, senor. Sometimes I like to practice. Practice? Si, senor. Good work. With these, senor. Yes, yes, sir. Front. Front. I said front. Yes, sir. Bring it with you. Yes, sir. Boy, it was close. Oh, I could make him much closer. Who? Not for me. Yeah, shoot his man to his room. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, shoot him somewhere. To... Uh, this way, please. Uh, I'm sorry, but you first. Thank you. Uh, you don't want nothing left, do you? Yes. Come here. I want to talk with you. Uh, regarding to which? How would you like to see your name out in front of a great big theater blazing in light with beautiful, rich, well-dressed women fighting over you every night? Uh, that don't sound bad, Senator Ritchie. Uh, what's the catch? There is no catch. It just calls for a little matter of bravery and no brain. Now, that sounds like me. So what does I do? Just a moment. Now, to be brief and to the point, I am a vaudeville artist. My assistant, he is sick in the hospital due to a little error on his part. You see, he moved at the wrong time, and I want someone to take his place. Somebody to take his place in the hospital? No, no, on the stage. Well, I'm glad to have met up with you. I will see you later. I'm not an actor. I'll see you. But, senor, you do not have to act. You just have to stand still. Come here. i show you. Hey, senorita, is that a blood spot on that school? That is beside the point. That ain't beside the point. That's right on the point. Do not be fresh. Good gracious, what kind of job is this? You stand still, I do not hurt you. All right, Senorita. Hey, Senorita, is you sure that you can see me against this board? Certainly. Is you sure that you are sure? I will not put these knives within one sixteenth of an inch of any part of your body, providing you do not move. Steady. What is that noise? He annoys me. Ah, do not worry about that. He will stop soon. Uh, uh, that's what I'm afraid of. Steady now. Cut it out. You make me nervous. <laughs> you nervous? Stand still. Oh, no, no, no. Caramba! You move! Bah! And I will keep moving. What's the matter with you? What are you breathing so hard for? I'm, I'm not going to be brain at all. You, you. Uh, oh, good, good, you you should have seen it. You should have been there. I've never seen it. It was right. Good gracious, you should have been there. How do you do, sir? How do I do what? Uh, nice day today, don't you think? What's nice about it? I don't know. Well, who owns this hotel? I, I do Listen, make up your mind. Which one of you is connected to Watchman? But uh, if it ain't nothing serious, uh, I am. Gimme. See this? There's a mortgage on this place, and I own it. I'm the great Brutus Blake. 
Is you fixing to pay on time? Uh, uh, not exactly. You'd better. If you don't, I'd take it lock, stock, and both barrels. In the meantime, we are staying here as your guest deluxe. We want to through the room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get him in. 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 Get him Mr. Burglar in my room. I've got him locked in the closet. Oh, don't be nervous. I'll send for the police. I'm not nervous. Don't you dare send for the police. Send us to the sandwiches. Huh? Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. scared he won't hurt you. This is my partner, Cicero. We do a double gorilla act called monkey shines. You know, I put on a gorilla suit and you can hardly tell us apart. Cicero, shake hands with the gentleman. Cicero. We want a room with twin beds. Otherwise, he pulls all the cover off me. Yes. Sit there all. Hold out your hand. You're a bad boy. You know, it's his one fault. He's all the time picking up things, but he don't mean nothing by it. He's got a slight case of kleptomania. Did he take anything for him? Anything. Oh. <laughs> Why well, take this gentleman up to room 309? Yes, sir. Room 309. <laughs> well, that's all right, mister. I'll take the bag. I've been working this. <clears throat> oh, good. Uh, just wait, please. Here's why you can live for 35 years. Here's where he was when they found him. And here's where the money is, if it's here. Ain't any use looking. You won't find it in here. How come you say that? I didn't say nothing. You didn't? No. Who did? I did. <laughs> it's Uncle Utica's old parrot. Oh. Well, come on, let's look around here. Get in there and look around. Who, me? Yes, you. I hope you don't think I'm going to get in there, do you? Come on, time to waste him. I'm only a bird in a gilded cage. Shut up. Well, all right, well, all right, chop, chop. Do you see anything? Yeah. What? A lot of bricks. Come on out from under there. Look around over there. I'll look in the glass. Uh -huh. And not even warm. You're getting colder. You're getting colder. Hey, get that African canary out here. He bothers me. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm removing you because you're irrelevant, immaterial, and have no bearing on the case whatsoever. I object, I object. Objection overruled. Confucius say, he who chases bird away will get the bird himself someday. Ha, 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 ha. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I want a room and bath. Yes, sir. What's the name, please? <laughs> That's a funny one. Yes, sir. We got a room. Some... Invisible man. 
Boy, he's on the level. I would like a southern exposure if possible. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But stay right there, please. Good morning, sir. Good morning. What room? 287 with sudden exposure. Yes, sir. Right in the floor. He's gone again. Again? He's done it twice. No kidding. I wonder why did he go? What kind of is if you come around here like this? I ain't never... Shall we go? Yes, sir. Right this way. Why is everybody? Nothing ever seems to happen around this Grand Hotel Ethiopia. Lady, where you been? You get that man up to his room all right? Did I get him up there? Listen, when I got upstairs, that man was already in his room taking a bath. It wouldn't surprise me if... Uh-oh. Uh Here we go again. Well, where's the barber shop? Thanks. Give me a shave. I want a shave. I'll be back in ten minutes. I beg your pardon. Perfectly all right, old fellow. Buy that in your ex sometime. Well, perhaps I'll say, baby, I'm scrambling out of here. Hey, 
Charlie, get me out of here. They all scram, and I still need a shave. Right in the palm of our hand. 
Come on, read what it says to me about when I takes the hotel over. Read it to me again. It says here the party of the first part promises, agrees, and obligates himself to pay the party of the second part the sum of $2,500 due, owed, and payable in legal tenders of the government of the United States of North America, Western Hemisphere, including Syracuse back up. Come on, Gil. Where are you going with that mortgage paper? Ah! Come on, come on. What are we going to do about it now? Now is the time to use some of that first short time talking about. Give me back that mortgage paper. No, 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 son of God. Did you hear what I heard? Uh-huh. That ain't no gorilla. Whatever it is, it's got the mortgage. We ain't got a leg to stand on. We'll see about that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. My uncle just had a nervous breakdown, and we must have a place where he can relax and have peace and quiet. Lady, you come to the right place. This hotel is so quiet that you can hear a pin drop. Wait a minute. Now, listen close. Yes? Yes. What did I tell you? Sign right here. Come on, 
Hmm? What's that one? Later, I can't keep track of what's happening around here. Come on now, wake up. Come, come on. Come on now, come, come, come. Oh. Come on. What is the matter with you? Ain't you got no sense? Run around here scaring these guests. Go on and take that suit off. It's work to be done. You better come on and get to work and cut that foolishness out. Oh, Anna. Come on, sort of that mail and cut out that food. While I check off this line in this chair. Son, what is the matter with you? Cut out that foolishness, will you? Ooh. Catch it from that man. You're supposed to take care of it. You took care of him. What is wrong? Is that you next to me? Wonderful. Is that you next? Now, come on, Wallenford. Now, don't turn around. Come on, tell me the truth. Is that you next to me? Wallenford, please say yes, that's you. Now you wait here. I won't be very long. And then we'll do some more hunting. All right. Why don't you let me try? Well, go ahead and try. Here, hold my book. a new papa. Why, he's a regular friend of one, Romeo and Casanova all rolled up into work.
morning in the lobby of this hotel. He's living right here. Is he married? Yes, but he ain't working at it. He says his wife doesn't understand. <laughs> What's his name, Miss Boo? He's got the sweetest sounding name you ever did hear. Brutus Blake. Don't you just love the sound of it? Did you say Brutus Blake? Yes, dearie. Do you know him? Well, I, I've heard him before. You say he's living here in the hotel? Yes, ma'am. Well, I think I'd better look him up. Sorry, honey. It won't do you any good. He's already been spoken for. Why, you know, he's the outfit and this guy I have a come to contact with. He bought me a new shoe, new dress, new coat, and new hat. Why, well, I'm practically new from top to bottom. My, my. You're the lucky one. <laughs> Uh-oh. Everybody seemed to be over there, behind that desk. Brother! Brother! <laughs> Look here, lady. I get off at 12 o'clock, and it's just two minutes to 12 now. Who do you want me to arrest? Him! Honey, don't be too impetuous. We can use a little diplomacy. All right, let me see you use some. See this mortgage here? It'll smooth out everything. And we ain't got nothing to worry about. It's due at 12 o'clock, ain't it? Yeah, exactly 12 o'clock. Is you got the money? You heard what the man said, is you got the money? Is you got the money? I'm talking to you, you got the money. If hotels were selling for a dime a dozen, I couldn't buy bird seeds for a cuckoo clock. I got some thinking to do. Gang with it. And I got to do some thinking fast, too. Uh-uh. Oh, that cook. You're a little fast, ain't you? <laughs> Uncle Euclid, I'm in an awful mess. That man over there gonna take this hotel away from me. What you give me if I don't get a whole lot of money? Where am I gonna get it? Where am I gonna get it? Where am I gonna get it? Tell me where am I gonna get it? <laughs> well, cutting my throat from ear to ear. Hey, stupid. Step out of it. Close your mouth. Open that safe. Who that said that? Who that said that? Two times to the left to 26. Two times to the left to 26. Two times to the left to 26. Go and tell me some more. Come on, come on now. Come on. Four times to the right, 34 and three quarters. Four times to the right to 34 and three quarters. Come on, talk to me now. Tell me something. Don't let me down. Now, that man gonna take this hotel. Come on now. Go, go.
You are here, but your time is up and you belong out there. What have you been yelling about grilling men without heads? You been dreaming? Dreaming? Do you know that hotel Ethiopia? When me and you was there, if the man come in and, and, and the head and, and, and he got and he got folded and and when what the little girl was walking up in shoes and crutches and thing walking over there, and I, man, I never saw you in a gorilla and everything, and you was and, and all that, and I never seen you. And, and good gracious me, boy, what a nightmare! Mm.